What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Today, we're going to be going through Judges chapter 3. Hallelujah. Uh, sorry for missing the last couple days. Uh, if you haven't seen my last video that I put out, uh, the music preview and Adam's testimony, check it out. Uh, but today, we're getting into Judges chapter 3. And before we get started, let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death, a body and soul, destroyed forever. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with Him in His kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn a right standing with God, and that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although He was perfect, didn't deserve any punishment, the death that He died was for us. The death that we deserve in a lake of fire for our sins, He died for us on a cross, so that through Him, that death is taken away from us and we receive eternal life. Through Him, our sin is taken away and we receive His perfection that He lived out. Repent and believe the gospel. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later and through His sacrifice is offering you eternal life, if you believe that and you truly turn to Him with all your heart and ask Him to forgive you for your sins, He will forgive you, He will give you the Holy Spirit, and He will give you eternal life. The Bible says we can't even imagine what God has prepared for those who love Him. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. And uh, it's a new year, at least on the uh, Gregorian calendar. God's calendar is a little bit different. The year starts in the spring. But uh, it's a new year according to the calendar of this world. And let's make this new year. Let's leave all our sins in the past, all our sins from last year, from yesterday, from any time in our past. Let's leave it all in the past. Let's make this a new year. Let's live for God. Let's serve Him with all our heart. Let's keep His commandments. Let's preach the gospel. The time is short. We're living in the last days. We need to preach the gospel. We need to get the word out. We need to spread the word of God. Jesus is coming soon. His judgment is coming soon. And billions of people are going to die when this all pops off. So let's be ready. Let's be right with God. And let's spread His Word. Let's make this new year the best year we've ever had. Not for ourselves, but for God and His kingdom. Now let's get into Judges chapter 3. Now these are the nations which Yahuwah left. To test Israel. And let me just say, if anybody's watching this who doesn't know, when I say Yahuwah, that's actually the name of God. It's four letters. It's in the Hebrew, it's yod heh wah -Hey. In English, it's Y-H-W-H. -H. Some pronounce it Yahweh. Some pronounce it Yahweh. I pronounce it Yahuwah. And uh, when you see Lord in the Bible, in the English translations of the Bible, the capital L-O-R-D, or even capital G-O-D, that's actually... The name of God. And so when I say Yahuwah, it's the Lord. It's actually God's name. Now these are the nations which Yahuwah left to test Israel by them. That is, and this, uh, these next two verses are actually in parentheses, maybe not in the original translation, where it says, That is, all who had not experienced any of the wars of Canaan, in order that the generations of the sons of Israel might be taught war. Those who had not experienced it formerly. So God left nations. He left some of the Canaanites. For the edification, for the strengthening of the Israelites. So they could go to war with them. So they could be strengthened. And so they could be tested. To see if they're going to follow God with all their heart. Or if they're going to follow the ways and the gods of these other nations. And as far as us, let's make sure we're following God and His ways and not the ways of this world. Not, let's cut out the music of this world. Let's cut out the movies and TV of this world. Let's focus completely on God. So important. So one more time from the beginning. Now these are the nations which Yahuwah left to test Israel by them. That is, all who had not experienced 
any of the wars of Canaan in order, in order. Actually, let me read it without this part, without the part in, part in parentheses. Now, these are the nations which Yahuwah left to test Israel by them. These nations are the five lords of the Philistines and all the Canaanites and the Sidonians and the Hivites who lived in Mount Lebanon from Mount Baal Hermon as far as Lebo Hamath. They were, test, they were for testing Israel to find out if they would obey the commandments of Yahuwah, which he had commanded their fathers through Moses. And the sons of Israel lived among the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And they took their daughters for themselves as wives. And they gave their own daughters to their sons and served their gods. So they, they were mixing with the other nations. And these other nations, they were Nephilim. They had, uh, they weren't completely human. They were giants. They weren't just giant human beings. They were giants. Uh, basically demons in the flesh. At least partially. The sons of Israel did all that was evil in the sight of Yahuwah. And forgot Yahuwah. Forgot Yahuwah their God. And served the Baals. And the Asheroth, and it says Baal is plural, because Baal is Nimrod. It all goes back to Nimrod, uh, who, if you read Genesis chapter 10 and 11, he was the leader. He was the first world emperor. If you look, uh, if you look up Sargon of Akkad, just Google Sargon of Akkad, A C C or A K K A D. Uh, that's Nimrod. He's known as the first ruler of Mesopotamia, the first world ruler. That's Nimrod. And if you look, uh, you just go to images, and actually you just search on Google. It uh, shows a statue like with an eye missing. And that's where the one eye, eye thing comes from, that all the celebrities do. The one eye that's on the back of the dollar bill. So once the people were scattered at the Tower of Babel, and the language, language, languages were confounded, I believe, into 70 languages. Um, they all went out into the different societies, forming all the different uh, cultures, all serving the same guy, Nimrod, under different, name and different names. And one of the names is Baal. And uh, I'm not going to go into the other ones right now, but that's why it says Baals, plural. The Baals, the, the Nimrods of the other nations. The Nimrods and the Asheroth. That's uh, referring to his wife. Which is Asherah Ish Ishtar. That's where Easter comes from. The sons of Israel did what was evil in the sight of Yahuwah. And forgot Yahuwah their God. And served the Baals and the Asheroth. Then the anger of Yahuwah was kindled against Israel. So that he sold them into the hands of Cushan Rishathaim, king of Mesopotamia. And the sons of Israel served Cushan Rishathaim eight years. When the sons of Israel cried to Yahuwah, Yahuwah raised up a deliverer for the sons of Israel to deliver them. Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. So that was the first judge of Israel, Othniel, Caleb's younger brother. Caleb, who went with Joshua. He was one of the 12 spies who went into the land of Canaan to begin with. That Caleb. His younger brother was the first judge of Israel. Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. The spirit of Yahuwah came upon him, and he judged Israel. When he went out to war, Yahuwah gave, Yahuwah gave Cushan Rishathaim, king of Mesopotamia, into his hand, so that he prevailed over Cushan Rishathaim. Then the land had rest 40 years. Then Othniel, the son of Kenaz, died. Now the sons of Israel again did evil in the sight of Yahuwah. So Yahuwah strengthened, strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel, because they had done evil in the sight of Yahuwah. And he gathered to himself the sons of Ammon and Amalek, and went and defeated Israel. And they possessed the city of the palm trees, and I'm not sure what city exactly that was. I didn't research into it. The sons of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab, 18 years. And Moab was on the 
west side of the Jordan, or the east side of the Dead Sea, which is modern day Jordan. But when the sons of Israel cried to Yahuwah, Yahuwah raised up a, deliv a deliverer for them, Ehud, Ehud, or Ehud, Ehud, son of Gera, a Benjamite, a left handed man. And the sons of Israel sent tribute by him to Eglon, the king of Moab. Ehud made himself a sword which had two edges, a cubit in length, which is 18 inches long. And he bound it on his right thigh under his cloak. He presented the tribute to Eglon, king of Moab. Now Eglon was a very fat man. It came about when he had finished presenting the tribute that he sent away the people who had carried the tribute. But he himself turned back from the idols, which were at Gilgal, and said, I have a secret message for you, O king. And he said, Keep silence. And all who attended him left him. So it was just Ehud. Ehud? Uh, yeah, I guess Ehud. Uh, that's how it would be pronounced. So he... He said, I have a secret message. It was just him and Eglon, the king of Moab. And uh, he was coming, as we're going to see here in a second, he was coming secretly, pre pretending to bring him a gift, but he was coming to kill him. But he himself turned back from the idols which were at Gilgal and said, I have a secret message for you, O king. And he said, keep silence. Oh, uh, Eglon did. And all who attended him left him. Ehud came to him while he was sitting alone in his cool roof chamber. And Ehud said, I have a message from God to you. And he arose from his seat. Ehud stretched out his left hand and took the sword from his right thigh. Ehud stretched out his left hand and took his sword from his right thigh, right thigh and thrust it into his belly. The handle also went in after the blade, and the fat closed over the blade, for he did not draw the sword out, out of his belly, and the refuse came out. Then Ehud went out into the vestibule and shut the doors of the roof chamber behind him and locked them, stabbed him in the stomach, and even the, like, to the point, this is eight, 18 inches long, a blade 18 inches long, to the point that even the handle went in. When he had gone out, when Ehud had gone out, his servants came and locked, or his servants came and looked, and behold, the doors of the roof chamber were locked. And he said, He is only relieving himself in the cool room. They waited until they became anxious, but behold, he did not open the doors of the roof chamber. Therefore they took the key and opened them, and behold, their master had fallen to the floor dead. Now Ehud escaped while they were delaying. And the passerby and passed by their idols and escaped to Sarah. It came about when he arrived that he blew the trumpet in the hill country of Ephraim. And the sons of Israel went down with him from the hill country, and he was in front of them. He said to them, Pursue them, for Yahuwah has given your enemies, the Moabites, into your hands. So they went down after him, and they seized the fords of the Jordan opposite Moab, and did not allow anyone to cross. They struck down at the time about 10,000 Moabites, all robust and valiant men, and no one escaped. So Moab was sub subdued that day under the hand of Israel, and the land was undisturbed for 80 years. So 80 years at that point. And after him, Shamgar, the son of Anath, not Anak, Anath, Oh, this is a uh, Shamgar. This is uh, an Israelite. And after him, so first, that's we've only been we're only going through one judge here, in Judges chapter three, and that was Othniel, uh, Caleb's younger brother. And uh, who delivered them from? From uh, Cushan Rishathaim, king of Mesopotamia. Because they were, they were serving them. 
they served uh, the king of Mesopotamia for eight years. Then God rose up Caleb's younger brother, Othniel. But then they sinned again. They went back serving the gods of the other nations again. So God gave them into the hands of Moab for 40 years. Uh, actually, they had, after uh, Mesopotamia, they had rest for 40 years. Then God gave them into the hands of the king of Moab for 18 years. Then God rose up uh, Ehud to take out the king of Moab, and then they destroyed 10,000 Moabites. And now the next deliverer for Israel, and this is the end of the chapter, this is the last verse, is a deliverer, they delivered them from the Philistines. After him, Shamgar, the son of Anath, who struck down 600 Philistines with an ox goad, with a... Is that a... Let me just look it up, actually. It's a farming instrument. Something like this. So Shamgar struck down 600 Philistines with an ox goat. And he also saved Israel. 600. That's like a... I mean, someone can only do something like that if God is with them. That's like some of the stories of some of David's mighty men. That's like the story of um, Samson struck down a thousand men with the jaw of a jawbone of a donkey. And we'll get to Samson here in the book of Judges. But that's the end of Judges chapter 3. Brothers and sisters, let's stay strong in faith. Let's endure to the end no matter what. Let's walk in all the ways of God. We're running out of time. We've got to be right with God. We've got to do His will in all things. And, uh, you know, I have some music coming out soon. I'm still working out uh, getting everything straight on Pro Tools. Uh, having some issues with importing uh, the beats. But, uh, Lord willing, I'll figure it out and be able to record this music. And I'll uh, have that out to y'all soon. It's called Last Days. If you haven't seen the video I put out, uh, the music pre preview I put out, you can find it on YouTube at either youtube.com slash C slash Larry Newport or bit.ly slash Larry Newport. Bit.ly slash Larry Newport or youtube.com slash C slash Larry Newport. And just go to uh, my last video before Judges 3. And uh, so hopefully that music will be out here soon. But uh, God led me to do this Bible study right now. We've got to keep up uh, going through the book of Judges and continue on with these Bible studies. But thank you all for tuning in. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, turn to him. Repent and believe the gospel. Jesus loves you. He wants to give you eternal life. He wants to save you. But he's not going to force you into a relationship with him. It's either eternal life or the lake of fire. Eternal death. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. And uh, that's the end of Judges 3. Thank you all for tuning in. Love you all. Shalom and Shabbat Shalom.